Hey, hey, this is Cedric, your host of the Bitcoin Matrix podcast. And happy Father's Day. It's only 90 degrees with 100% humidity here in sunny Florida. And we just got back from Father's Day dinner to find out that our AC is not working. Luckily, we were able to borrow one of those portable AC units. So we'll all crowd into one room tonight until we get the new part, which we'll find out tomorrow how long that will take in this new era of supply chain issues. All that aside, I want to tell you about today's show with relevant Peter Schiff, one of the funniest and most interesting nims on Twitter. We originally recorded and released this episode in October of 2020 for episode number seven of the Bitcoin Matrix podcast, but most of you weren't around then. Relevant Peter Schiff was the first NIM account on Twitter that I interviewed. Remember, I couldn't even see his face on Zoom for this one. Relevant Peter's backstory is so interesting, truly entertaining, and it sounds like a movie. And this chat still sounds so fresh today and poignant, really, especially considering this market cycle that we're in. But before we get into all of that, I want to share a quick word about our amazing sponsors. Why not buy the dip with the homies at Swan Bitcoin? No withdrawal fees, best security in the game, plus $10 in free Bitcoin just for signing up with my link. No strings attached. Go to swanbitcoin.com forward slash matrix to get started. But to really own your Bitcoin and have sovereignty over your money, you need to take self-custody of your Bitcoin and get it off of your exchange. Now go that extra step and secure your Bitcoin from a single point of failure and physical disaster with a Cypher wheel or the new Cypher Grid seed storage device. CypherSafe provides important, tangible security tools for Bitcoiners like us. CypherSafe seed storage devices focus on securing your Bitcoin with beautiful, elegant, practical devices that are machined from solid stainless steel. So keep your SAT safe. Go to cyphersafe.io and use the code MATRIX to get 10% off your order. If you are new to the Bitcoin Matrix podcast or even a longtime listener, please make sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform and on YouTube. And while you're at it, it'd be great if you could write a five-star review where you dome your podcast and tell your friends and family about the show. And thank you for listening. Now, let's enter the Bitcoin matrix for this fantastic rip with the incredibly relevant Peter Schiff. What is real? How do you define real? You can't jump into cash. Cash is trash. What do you do? You get out. Relevant Peter Schiff, fresh out of Twitter jail. How are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm here, man. I'm. Uh, it was it was brief, but uh, yeah, they let me out. Yeah, that's great, man. I'm happy that you're out. Uh, I want to start it off with one of your uh, early tweets. I think that really, you know, sets you up. Um, relevant Peter Schiff. Bitcoin can't succeed. The people working on it are too smart. The innovations are happening too fast. The virus is spreading too far. The principles make too much sense. The problems it fixes are too many. The, fa the hash rate is too high. The blocks are produced too consistently. Um, this was hilarious. This is how I first came across your account um, maybe a year, year and a half ago. Um, I really appreciate you know your, your discourse uh, in, in the community and the feed. So uh, how did this all come about? Um, are, are you just uh, obsessed with Peter Schiff? Uh, not, not in the slightest. Man. Um, no, I, I, I had a, um, well, I, I've got my, my real account, which I, I use minimally, but, um, yeah, I found myself, um, spending an inordinate amount of my replies, which are very few, um, kind of telling what a clown he was being. Cause he's just, uh, very disingenuous when he talks about Bitcoin and, and, you know, clearly uh, knows better and is uh, is kind of more just talking his book or really just kind of fishing for engagement or, or you know, whatever it may be. Um, so I, I was I was just kind of uh, felt like an acting an ass one day and I fired up the accountant and uh, and basically just started out uh, spitting out a bunch of stuff. And, and at first it was almost kind of like mimicking him or saying things in ways that um, uh, a less Bitcoin ignorant version of him would be saying. Um obviously um it was it was well received at first because at the time he was really digging into the bitcoin community and and i'm sure you're very familiar with how the bitcoin uh 
maybe it's not a community, whatever the hell you call it. Sure. Uh, uh, how, however, uh, when people kind of kick that nest, uh, how they mm-hmm. act. So uh, obviously, somebody love they loved kind of um, me giving Peter some shit. But um, after that, it just kind of turned into you know, it's it more engagement. I, I had fun interacting with people. It was good energy with everybody on there. And, um, you know, I kind of wear them like a mask now, you know I mean? I could, it might as well be Kermit the frog. I don't, you know, I would give, I would be giving him an equal amount of shit. It was, if it was from a different anonymous account. Right. Um, I just happened to wear his face like a mask and, um, and people, people always tag me when it's something related to him. Um, as you could imagine. Sure. I, I got to read one more. Bitcoin is going to $1 per sat. Uh, yeah man so funny um (laughs) how did you come to bitcoin um well uh i kind of tell my my story um kind of the same so uh forgive any of your audience who may have may have heard it before but um i i i got exposed to bitcoin um a lot more than i should have before i paid attention to it um but usually i kind of back up before bitcoin and kind of give some context into and kind of what made me a bitcoiner um I used to be in the white collar job circuit, um, basically did strategy consulting, was on the road all the time, um, met a guy in Philly on a project and he kind of showed me the ropes on how to play poker. We were playing up Atlantic city all the time, really enjoyed learning poker and kind of the nuance and the bankroll management, the long-term mindset and kind of had the grinded out mentality and that type of thing. Um, slowly, but surely ended up kind of morphing into a, a I don't want professionals, a a weird word to use when I say poker player, but I I did it for a living. So, I mean, I I guess I I played professionally, but. What um, what was that transition like um, to jump over Uh, from, you know, white collar worker to, you know, maybe black market poker player? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, well, I I wouldn't even call it black market or anything like that. But I mean, it's, I mean, it it was slow and steady, kind of like Bitcoin. I mean, it just kind of slowly ate it. Um, It went from, you know, let's play a couple games at the, you know, at the double tree conference room or something like that while we're, while we're on the road to all night and just walk into work, um, completely, uh, exhausted the next day or whatever it may be. Um, and eventually over time, um, it, it just kind of became a, um, a full-time, full-time gig where it just kind of consumed more and more of my time until I was playing. Um, but anyways, I, I kind of played full-time ended up leaving the job. Uh, my last, my last stint at the white collar, job was was based i was living in foxwoods casino uh for multiple months instead of um because that, that's my pro my project was in providence so i was commuting to my project instead of commuting to the casino and by that point i realized like okay i'm just i'm wasting my time with the job thing so um wow. got rid of the job uh and actually kind of um stopped playing in casinos and, and migrated to playing online um which is which is kind of what primed me to be a, a I, I guess, to understand censorship because uh, when when Poker Black Friday happened, uh, if you're familiar with that event, it happened like um, I think it was like 2011. Um, basically, the Congress passed an act. Uh, the FBI seized a bunch of the sites, made it where you weren't allowed to transfer money to and from them, and it, and it, it it didn't make it illegal, but it made everybody feel like it was illegal, and then kind of black market and weird. And then the games pretty much dried up and all the easy money went away. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, had a bunch of money locked up that I'd, I'll never see. Right. Which is unfortunate. So that's kind of the uh, first lesson with not your keys, not your coins and, and, and censorship. Right. Um, which which kind of, I guess, taught me that lesson. Um, but then kind of to, to move along to how I found uh, to answer your question, which is a long winded answer there. No, no worries. Um, uh, I after I, I kind of gave up on, on playing poker, at least as a full-time gig, um, I wanted to do something. I didn't want to really get back in the consulting world. Um, it's good good money, but it's just a burnout lifestyle, traveling all the time. So uh, I, I basically opened up a, a few locations for cell phone retail stores, uh, basically selling, you know, just like a Verizon or AT&T type of store, um, selling cell phone service and satellite internet service. And once I kind of spent the time to get that fully staffed and operational and work out all the kinks of it, um, I started running a poker game out of the back of, of my stores and um, which which did better than than the business for me so that was that was a nice thing too to kind of get back into poker and, and, and earn some income from that as well were these were these big decisions for you to kind of run these tables out of the back of your store um, no I mean what, I mean worst case I mean I get a landlord that slaps me on the wrist or something I mean it's it's uh you know no, nobody's I mean of course, I didn't take any rate from the game. I didn't earn any money whatsoever or anything like that. Right. It was all charity and free. But 
um, if anybody's listening. But um, <laughs> well, I dig because it, you know, it seems like, you know, there's this, you know, you, you, people can do what they want with their money. Is kind of a, a think a bit of this ethos here with with the the, the opportunity you're Absolutely. providing for your players. Absolutely, yeah, and and that's kind of how how I how I saw that. You know, I mean, we I, I live in a place that's not necessarily. I mean, we we can get to a casino, but I mean, it, it's a little bit of a hike. There's not one twenty minutes down the road, um, so there's there's a pretty good like home game circuit, or you know, there's several guys that run games around here. But anyways, um, I, you know, th- I enjoyed doing that, and, and we would kind of do that um, several nights a week. And um, I had a, one of my players um, was into me for a couple grand because um, depending on the player, I let him run on credit and that kind of thing. But he was into me for a couple grand, and he got locked up. And um, he basically didn't want to run interest on the debt, so he wanted to over collateralize his um, the money he owed me. And the only thing he had of value at the time was a Bitcoin. Nice. Um, so this was my first actual touch um, with Bitcoin. Um, at the time, it was trading in the low teens. So basically, he was sending me for like two grand, and he sent me two hundred Bitcoin to collateralize his debt, which was I, I feel like it was twenty five hundred to three grand in total value. At how, the time. How, how were you guys uh, transferring the Bitcoin at that time? I mean, you, you, it was because it, you're it's new so, to it. It's so long ago. Yeah, it's so long ago. It's kind of foreign to me. But there was it was just some website because I remember I had a, a password to log in. I still remember. I'm not going to say it out loud, but I still remember the password to log in. I guess it was just like a web wallet um, that just had like it was it was like a username and a password. Uh, I don't. Re- I, I remember um, having to do something with like a. a having a PGP key in case somebody needed to send me some type of email. And like, I had instructions literally printed out. Like if I need to do something with this, like here's, you know, right. here's what to do. Never had to do anything with it. And I basically turned it over to him um, afterwards. So he literally sent it to me. I, I saw that I could access it and he probably could, he probably had like the key or whatever and could have just gone back in and taken. I wouldn't have known any better, but right. um, that probably wouldn't have been um, wise. Yeah. Either, I'm wondering but. what your comfort level was with dealing with Bitcoin, uh, you know, at first glance back then. I mean, dude, it was, well, I mean, it was a couple grand. I mean, it, it you know, sure. to me, I could, I could write it off and, and you know, Got be it. all right. Um, but I mean, realistically, um, people in the, um, let's say the gambling world know that just absolutely uh, kind of stealing or, or, or intentionally uh, grifting somebody out of some money could lead to some um, mm. bad news for them. Right. So that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, he, he, uh, he got out of jail and, um, from what I understood, he sold most of all his belongings to to pay it off to 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 get his Bitcoin back, um, wow. which to me was kind of interesting because it's just, you know, it's like okay, well, it, I don't I don't know what what the value he sees in it, but it kind of left a seed in my head. You know, it, there's something there that, right. that matters, or to, you know, for him to some reason. Um, so that was the first Bitcoin touch, and then the next one came pretty quickly after. Um, so my 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 poker game. Um, I have a lot of degenerate gamblers basically that played sure and um i don't know if you know how how poker is played but like we were playing one two or two five no limit poker and some people were straddling to like 50 bucks we kind of put like unlimited straddle i mean they were just you know people were throwing lots of money around for that size of a game okay and so we just just had some i mean people betting 100 bucks on coin flips on the side you know just just dumb shit to right pass the time so um several of these guys had bookies several of them were you know want to know, know the score so they could, you know, call their guy or whatever. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, I'm the house here. You know, what, what am I doing? So, uh, but basically I, I decided I was going to branch out and start, um, booking sports action, mm-hmm. um, at my games, which turned out to be, uh, better for me than the game. So I was, uh, How so? <laughs> uh, pro- uh, well, of course I didn't make any money doing so, but right. if I were to theoretically say I did, I might, might've made a few more dollars doing so, right. but, um, but uh, but uh, my, my my players um, kind of bet frequently. I mean, they I, you know I had people that wanted to bet on like there's a dart championship, which kind of sticks in my head. Like, of course, people don't know anything about fucking darts, but you know this guy that's literally wanted to bet on it because he just wanted to bet on everything that's on the board. Sure. And when you're taking those bets manually, um, you can't scale that. You you just kind of have to um, <laughs> you know okay, well here's the line. Do you want it? Okay, confirm. Got it. You know, and it's a lot of back and forth. You end up stuck on your phone all day. Um, so I kind of searched for a, a automated solution to that, and I found um, what's called a pay per head site, uh, which is essentially an online. Uh, it's kind of like an app, somebody or, or a web interface you can log into and say, okay, the, the Dodgers are you know two and a half mm-hmm. run favorites over the whoever, and you can place theoretical bets. No money gets exchanged with these sites. It's literally just a you know I set a theoretical credit limit in the in the app, give you your login. 
you make theoretical bets. It keeps a, a ledger of that and tells me theoretically who owes what at the right. end of each uh, each week. And then for each of those players that's active, whether you made one bet or a million bets, you pay per head. And it's based on your, you know, if you've got like 10 players, you pay whatever it is, like 12 bucks a head. Once you're up to 50 players or, or you know, 10 to 50, you kind of, you know, it, it scales down in price as you scale up in players. And um, theoretically, once I got to, to yeah, right, right, in, in, in theory. So once I got over 50, because I expanded outside my game, because that's, um, you know, I, I was I was good. I pay on time. I expect people to pay on time. You know, I, I operate very uh, business wise. I don't really do a lot of bullshit when I when I say I'm going to do something. So, um, for theoretical gamblers, they they like that. They like the consistency and whatnot. So I kind of grew the book. Uh, once I got over fifty players, I got a call from this site, um, who's based out of Costa Rica, but they were basically like, "Hey, if you want to save even more on this, um, you know, on your fees, you could pay us in Bitcoin. We give you ten percent discount." Sure. And so, you know, at the time, you know, I'm I'm paying. I don't know what it is, but it's, mm-hmm. you know, in the neighborhood of 500 bucks a week or something like that in fees, you know, what's 50 bucks, you know what I mean? Compared to, I don't know anything about Bitcoin. I don't know how to access it, store it, spend nothing, right? Doesn't right. matter to me. I don't care. I don't know why you want it, but it, it kind of planted another seed in my head as far as, um, you know, okay, these people would probably be considered gray market at best. Um, you know, they're not doing anything illegal. They're just, they're just putting lines up and, and playing fantasy. Right. But, um, if they if they were in a weird spot, I'd imagine they would want money that wouldn't be um, able to be fucked with, right. uh, so to speak. So um, that kind of planted another uh, seed in my head. Mm-hmm. And then, and again, that was just a few weeks after the the guy with the the two hundred Bitcoin had actually uh, got his back. And then got it's it. not a couple weeks later, and the guy that helps me run my poker game, um, he used to you know cook buy snacks deal sometimes you know what i mean mm-hmm. like just whatever we needed for the game he, sure. he kind of helped me run that um he kind of came to me and um he he knew a guy who was who was basically getting just a unlimited list of of drugs in town of the best a plus quantity whatever that kind of thing mm-hmm. and um you know we're, we're not big big drug people um i mean i'm, I'm no prude i uh I, I enjoy myself sometimes but um he wow. basically is like hey i, I want to um yeah, I want I want to I want to get some stuff from this guy. And I'm like, well, you know, I, he he could be who knows what. You know what I mean? That might just be the word on the street that he's the guy, and you're right. going to get set up. You know, find out how he does it. So a uh, little research led us to the Silk Road um, at the time, which was um, I don't know twenty. I feel like we're in about 2013 at that point. Okay. And um, you know, he he pulled it up and he showed me, and and I I did a kind of a deep dive one night into you know the Tor network and the you know, what onion sites and, and what's out there and, you know, just, just the, the nasty underworld of the, the dark web or the deep web and uh, watch, watching YouTube videos of people explaining that and that kind of thing. So once I kind of had a feel for it and I saw the Silk Road um, with my own eyes, it was almost kind of too tempting not to just like, well, this is interesting. I, I got I, I to gotta know if it yeah. works, right? So um, we basically ordered some, um, uh, theoretically, he ordered some mm-hmm. psychedelics, um, you know, I, I told him I'd, I'd, I'd pay for whatever. Um, he, he handles the rest of that. So, uh, we bought like, it was like seven, eight Bitcoins, something like that. Um, and I think they were like 80 bucks at the time. We right. put half of it on the Silk Road and ordered some, um, some mushrooms. And, um, lo and behold, a couple of days later, um, you know, he's got the vacuum sealed, perfect packaging. You know what I mean? It looks like, you know, better than, better than Amazon would send it to you. Right. And, um, so we we kind of tripped pretty hard that night, and um, and we're just kind of like our minds were just blown because you know we're like you know this is some what what is this you know what right. I mean this is some magic, um, and 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 the process was so janky at the time too it was you know you know we had to I had to go to Western Union and and hmm. send a, a, a whatever you know the Western Union to to basically Japan like from Mount Gox and, I guess yeah yeah it was Mount Gox and um and basically we had to send some money uh, to Japan and like. You know, you're like, they're like, hey, at this address, you'll get money in, in, at some point in time. You know what I mean? And right. it might be in the next two days. So we're just kind of like, yeah, okay. And, um, you know, I, I like to say, you know, knowing what I know now, like I would absolutely not do that a second time, not just for the, the legal possibility of ramifications there, but um, that obviously seems scammy, but um, apparently was not and it, and it works. So, right. Well, um, maybe there's a code, you know, kind of like where in the poker world there's this code 
Um, it, it seems like yeah. you're you're comfortable in the, in these venues where people honor the code, and the code is do what you want, just pay up. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, and it, and it very well could have been some scammy person over there, sure. That w- w- you know would would have felt the same way. Um, I, I might have just been more lucky than than good on that, but yeah, I mean, I definitely right. kind of identify with that mentality. I mean, just just be a man of honor. If you say what you're going to do, then do what you you're going to say. You know what I mean? Right. Um. So anyway, uh, we we basically um we tripped pretty hard that that night. I believe we watched Alice in Wonderland, which is uh, kind of fitting. Sure. Um. But we were just talking about you know, holy shit, man. We you know we we just sent some shit to Japan. All of a sudden, we've got mushrooms on the door stuff. Right. And, you know, here we are now. So, um. I thought magic that was pretty mushrooms, awesome. magic money. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of determined at that point to I'm going to learn what Bitcoin is because it can facilitate this happening, right? The people in Costa Rica want it for whatever reason. My, you know, guy that got locked up uh, from the poker game was adamant that he wanted it back. And you know, again, why would you be selling your furniture for this stuff if it didn't mean something? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna dive in, and I- then. Um, Two weeks later, Silk Road is shut down, and I, I kind of uh, mm. burn it. I don't care anymore. Don't want to hear about it. Right. <laughs> I'm sensing a with theme that. with the online poker shut down, the Silk Road shut down. You were shut down on Twitter the other day. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a censorship theme. How much do you think, you know, gambling, uh, you know, casino type atmospheres uh, primed you for Bitcoin, uh, you know, asymmetric bets? Um, waiting for your turn kind of thing how much do you think that primed you uh probably more than i kind of consciously think about um you know i, I definitely you know in the way that not in the way but uh, i i changed when i kind of came to poker um as a human being just you know learning the you know how to play the right way how to read people how, you know there's body language to it there's math to it you know there's kind of like you know bitcoin there's 50 disciplines that surround it right it's mm-hmm. not just a thing it, there's a lot of things that surround it so um, kind of learning that, kind of thinking about that long-term mentality of, of yeah, what, kind of pick your spot and, and be tight and aggressive. And, and when you find the right spot, um, you know, dive at it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't really kind of uh, actively think how, how poker did that for me. And I, I, I assume that it primed me pretty well for it, just kind of being in the um, ability to, to kind of separate emotions from money, um, things right. like that. You know, I, I could take an 80% drawdown and, you know, it, it doesn't feel good, but I mean, I I would almost prefer an eighty percent drawdown right now, just because you know I get excited at the idea of cheap sats because my conviction is, I mean, it's one hundred percent minimum. I, right. I am I'm sold. Yeah. Uh, have you had experience at a table where you know you've been drawn down eighty percent and fought your way back and grinded it out? And, oh, oh yeah, right. yeah, many so, many times. Yeah, I'm sure that lays in somehow um, to to your Absolutely. Bitcoin, you know, uh, ethos. I think. Why do you Bitcoin so hard? Um, cause what else you going to do, man? I, um, <laughs> if you, mm-hmm. if you ask enough questions and, and, and follow them to their, uh, to their ultimate conclusions, you kind of land at Bitcoin no matter what you do. Yeah. Um, uh, that's kind of the way I see it. Yeah. If you could talk to Peter Schiff, like face to face, what what would you, uh, tell him about Bitcoin? Man, I, I don't know. I don't really give a fuck what he thinks anymore. Uh, like I said, I wear him, I wear him like a mask, everything that needs to be told to Peter, um, has been told he's well aware he's, um, you know, I, I've got respect for Peter. Uh, if you take out Bitcoin, uh, I've got some respect for Peter as, as who he is as a human being, mm-hmm. um, you know, kind of the causes he fights for and, and, and his economic mind and that kind of thing. So sure. he's, he's a sharp guy. He's, he's doing this at a very specific angle. Um, I assume it's only because he can't sell Bitcoin or doesn't sell Bitcoin. Um, and that's not good for his business if he if he converts because um, being a Bitcoin bull is not profitable in itself other than you know possibly right. owning it and, and profiting from it. So um, he knows everything he needs to know. Um, I, I think he's actually kind of um, leveraging his son um, and and his son has kind of tweeted about Bitcoin a few times and I think he's kind of leveraging that as the play to uh, um, be exposed or to or to act like you know right. I mean, to, to kind of play that up or play whatever so. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's whatever, man. He's, you know, to to me, if, if you're not, uh, if you know enough to know enough, and you're not, you're not on the train, then just get run over by it, man. That's what I see it. I mean, it's you've had enough time to pay attention, yeah. and if you if you're not, then too tough. 
such a i mean i didn't really know him uh before bitcoin but it, you know i learned about him through trace mayer and you know he kind of heard about bitcoin so early I, I just can't imagine how he's just i i see it as he's chilling his bags and he's just extremely bitter um yeah and, i mean i don't i don't know how you're worth uh whatever the hell he's worth and you know, if you heard about it at single or double digits and you didn't just take a flyer on it and buy right. a thousand of them, you know what I mean? Just, right. just, just for shits and giggles. Cause it means nothing to you. Um, you know, again, we, no, we, I, we don't know. We don't, maybe he did. Uh, you know, I just, I, I thought it'd be a lot easier for him to take like maybe the Dan Tapanero route and just sell gold and Bitcoin. I don't know why he fights it so hard or, or sees it as only Cause I think at this point it really gets him more engagement than anything on Twitter than, than tweeting about gold would. Yeah, um, well, I mean, that's I think that's the only reason um, right. he, he still puts the, the fishing hooks out there um, and, and probably because a lot of Bitcoiners have um, that same kind of hard money mentality, um, even though Bitcoin is superior. I mean, gold is is obviously, you know, it's not like it's a joke or anything. Um, so I'm sure he ends up recruiting some converts or, or some people that want to hear what he has to say. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure some people slide from the Bitcoin world towards his direction out of the uh, just the sheer volume. Um, yeah. I think, I think he's, he's just trying to keep his gold bugs. I don't even think he's trying to get too many Bitcoiners. What do, what do you think of gold's monetary premium? Gold's monetary premium? Yeah. Um, well, the way I see it is is um, one of the earliest things I actually tweeted at Peter um, was, you know, there's two things that kind of make up the price of, of gold, and it's the utility value and the monetary premium. And, um, you know, the utility value for you know, something that goes in a piece of electronics or, or whatever the use case is, aerospace parts or whatever. Um, that price I can't imagine is too flexible because there are other materials that also work for those things. Um, so I imagine the monetary premium, whatever the number is, is a small percentage of gold's price, right? Because if gold doubles to, you know, if gold goes to, let's say $5,000 an ounce, mm. it's it's not like the the utility value is two and a half X or whatever it is, um, you know, to, to somebody that has to buy it um, for parts, they'll probably just use an alternative metal or whatever different source. Um, so since that's kind of a, a fixed part of that, most of the gold's premium is monetary premium. Mm -hmm. And my, my mentality around that is, um, you know, he, he kind of shits on Bitcoin for not having intrinsic value um, because you can't, use it for a, a, another thing, right? You can't, you can't make an airplane or whatever out of that. Um, but to me, that's because it simply is the purpose is money, right? It, it has no, you know, it, it doesn't need the small fraction of its actual value to fall back on in the event that people stop using it as money um, to give it value. Um, the fact that people can make a gold tooth filling is that what drives the gold market? I mean, that's a stupid argument, right? right? I mean, that's just that's just not realistic. Um, and to say that that's that's why it still has value no matter what. Okay, well, if people stop trading gold and only used it for tooth fillings. Well, people would stop mining gold. I mean, you know, it just it, it would who would care, right? It just it would just be a thing. Um, so, you know, to me, monetary premium is everything, and that's because it has certain characteristics of money, right? I mean, divisibility, portability, you know, all the scarcity, all those uh, those characteristics. And I just think, well, I don't think, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty objectively uh, true that Bitcoin does all of those things better than gold, um, mm. at least if you if you know what you're doing, um, sure. to, to store it properly and that kind of thing. How, how do you think the next, like, five or ten years play out for Bitcoin? Uh, um, I mean, it's hard to tell, man. The uh, There's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of fuckery coming from the government, I'm sure. Um, and it kind of depends on the, on the price action. I'm sure some of it's going to be reactive. You know, if Bitcoin just goes stupid and 10x is 20x is whatever from from here in a short period of time, you're probably going to see a lot more um, urgency on the behalf of the government who's obviously trying to um, put out their digital currencies or the central bank digital currency, the, the big push that's going on right now. Um, and anything that's a threat to that, um, you know, might just get in the way. But, you know, no matter what, um, all these experiments fail over time um, because you either just everybody's just a slave to their government has to do what the government says and, and, and just kind of everybody lives in an authoritarian world and, and gets worse and worse um, conditions. They have to work harder, longer hours and more years for their currency that grows, you know, softer and weaker and is more at risk or risk for being censored or, or, or taken back from them with these uh, digital currencies. 
um, you know, there's going to be so much control over people that, you know, at some point the people push back and, you know, I, I don't see a world where humans just bend over uh, collectively to, to, to puppet masters around the world. So um, right. to me, it all ends at Bitcoin no matter what, because uh, I mean, what else? I mean, again, what, what else is there um, yeah. that, that's got those kind of properties? Is Bitcoin like religion to you? Very much. Um, and, and I don't mean like you rely, I pray or anything like that to a Satoshi or, or some shit like that. But I mean, religion and it's, uh, you know, a lot of people are religious about their, like their organized religions because it's the source of truth for them. Right. They, 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 they identify with the principles and those kind of things. And, um, you know, I, I've talked to too many Bitcoiners and obviously everybody's different and, and Bitcoin doesn't affect everybody the same way, but I feel like people that truly, um, truly get deep. Um, and, 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 you know, the people that become obsessive about it, right? It, it seems like that's the path. If you study it enough, that's uh, eventually just kind of takes over your life. Um, but those people tend to, um, you know, they, they, they kind of like seek a higher purpose. You know what I mean? They want to, they want to do right by people. They kind of want to be men of their word, women of their word. Um, they kind of move more conservatively. I don't mean that politically, but I mean, they, they kind of, you know, what's the impact of my decision, right? I, I'm not going to necessarily gamble and, 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 and risk my, my children's future or something like that. Right. Um, they're more of the, I want to plant the tree that I'm not going to sit under the shade of uh, mentality. And um, you know, those, those people that kind of think long-term, right. The generations ahead, what, what actually matters. And um, you know, to me, that's, uh, what other way is there to be? You know what I mean? If once you've seen that kind of light, how do you, how do you turn away from it? And, uh, you know, th it, it's made me change as a, as a human being. Um, and I can't tell you how many ways, I mean, I, I, I used to have new plastic bullshit all the time that I was mm -hmm. buying and stuff that just doesn't matter at all. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's, it's, it's literally like, I mean, my, any materialism that I've had is almost kind of gone. Like I, I literally just don't care anymore. Um, you know, because I, I want what's sure. best for those around me and those that I care about and, and, and you know, try to be a, a person of honor, honestly. Yeah. Do the people around you and those that you care about, um, have they heeded your word? Do they, are they interested in Bitcoin? Do they think about money oh, in the way that you do? Uh, um, well, most of them, they don't get a, a choice because uh, those close enough to, to see me enough, uh, hear it enough. And, they you know, they, whether or not they want to, they kind of get um, dosed. But, I mean, yeah, I mean. Everybody within one degree of separation of me owns a Bitcoin. I mean, oh wow, straight up. <laughs> I mean, I, that's I awesome. Mean, that's, yeah, I mean, it, you family members, friends. I mean, whatever it is, um, you know, I'm, I it was, uh, I think it was like New Year's last year. I was, uh, or, or what? I think it was maybe New Year's, but it was like Bitcoin was trading at eight k, and I sent out a group text and I was like, you can buy an unlimited amount, mm -hmm. and if it's less than eight k, at new year's next year i'll buy it from you for your price right here's literally risk free. And, and people took you up on it your friends and family yeah, yeah it's it, it, well fa not not so much family but uh yeah i mean it was a couple bites but most of it was just kind of like oh okay you know right big, big deal you know kind of you know big guy over here but it's mm -hmm. just like no nah, I'm, just, I'm just trying to literally lead you to the light risk free yeah um but um but yeah man i mean everybody that i kind of feel it's almost like my um I don't want to say like my duty or whatever, but not even to get people into Bitcoin, but to kind of wake up from the fiat trap. You know what I mean? Like there's, I kind of view the world as, um, like you remember that show with the walking dead. Did you ever watch that show? No, I did not. Yeah. You didn't miss much, <laughs> but, but basically I, I'm, I'm sure you can get the gist of it, but I mean, they were, they were basically the world was filled with zombies, right? They were just kind of walking around mindless. You know what I mean? Yeah. There were, there were people that weren't zombies, but didn't really have a home. So they kind of wandered around and they were looking for the right thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you had these people that are almost like in their little citadels or whatever, wherever they could hold up and, and kind of defend the fort. And that's kind of how I, I almost see the world now is just, most people are just walking around, just, just blind, dumb, just, just whatever, you know, mm -hmm. okay, I'll, I'll take this for a job. I'll go work and I'll put my kid in daycare and never see them again. And, you know, Oh, you need me to stay extra and never ask for a raise or a cost of living adjustment and just, just get fucked and fucked, you know I mean? Forever. And, and, and that's kind of how the most of the world is, is slowly trained to be, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. just, just work off that hundred K in student debt and then it, you'll finally be able to get a house. Or it's interesting. You know? Cause I was going to ask you what the barrier to entry is. And I think you kind of answered it where you said, you know, most of the world is trained to be. Yeah. Um, it's, and, uh, it's horrible, man. Yeah. 
It's interesting because you look at you know your story and and at, at different points you were kind of seemed to be seeking out more than was allowed, um, or or you know not so much allowed but like to do what you want. Uh, and to be with people who are also doing what they want and not to really uh, quibble about that. Yeah, well, no, that's definitely me. Um, I mean, even when I, you know, I kind of did the white collar job thing for, for a while um, after after getting my degree. And even then it was kind of, you know, inside of me is, is just rebelling the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, mm. this is not natural. This is not how it should be. This is not what you should do. This is, this, you're on a hamster wheel. Um, so I've kind of been... Um, you know, well, I, I call myself unemployable. It's not true. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I could be a very, very good employee. I can get things done. And I've done, you know, pretty, pretty big things at a white collar job on, on public sector projects and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, my mentality is not employable. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of, I need to be a free man. And then and I, I can do great, very hard work at whatever, you know, I think is right. But I mean, it's always kind of been, you know, what's right to me and, and what feels right and that kind of thing. Right. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely always been a search for more, but um, it's funny. A lot of those other things kind of fell away. Um, you know what I mean? Once, it's almost like I found it. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm here now. Um, yeah. Sounds kind of corny about a, you know, a cryptocurrency, right? To kind of, to kind of feel that way. But I mean, sure. it's just kind of like, no, no, I found principle and yeah. truth. We talk a lot about it on the show about, you know, Bitcoin is true North or Bitcoin Zen. Um, so, I mean, obviously, you know, you're a hardcore Bitcoiner. W what do you think of the word bi hyper Bitcoinization? And I'm not talking about price, but I'm just talking about like where, where things are going for Bitcoin, where things are going for the monetary system, uh, you know, and, and how do you see things playing out? Maybe even let's take a longer view, maybe 20, 30 <clears throat> years. Yeah, well, I mean, so I, I kind of view Bitcoin or, or hyper Bitcoinization happening. It's just kind of relative. So. Um, I kind of said, so like a black hole, right? Uh, when we look at a black hole through a telescope, it looks like it's standing still, right? Nothing's happening mm. um, because time is so distorted at a black hole. Gravity is so strong. But at the event horizon of a black hole, it is absolute chaos, right? So it's it's things are flying in fast. It's pretty much about the speed of light. Um, it's just distorted um, due to gravity. So I kind of see it that way now. Like if you're if you're on the outside looking at Bitcoin, you, you've heard about it. Maybe it popped up in the news, but oh, like, oh, it's still not below the all time high. Oh, that, you know, cool. It's, it's, it, I guess it's chugging along. Um, you, me, maybe, uh, we try to keep up with Bitcoin. You can't do this shit. I mean, it's too much, right? It's, it's literally like the developments every day. You can't, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, bless you for trying to uh, do a podcast and, and I hope, I hope you're successful, but there's, there's not enough. I mean, there's, there's too many podcasts out here and they still can't get through all the information, right? right? That's how, that's how much uh, is going on. And and when you look up close, it's just, it's super fast, right? It's the speed of light that this thing's growing. So um, I, I kind of, you know, that Bill Gates quote, you kind of overestimate in two years, underestimate what you can do in mm -hmm. 10 years, that type of thing. Um, I think that's kind of what's going to happen. Um, I, I think the, this year was a big year for people kind of waking up to um, kind of the, you know, the, Money printer go burr, haha. -ha. You know, every everybody kind of like that that rang true with a lot of people that normally would have been the zombies in The Walk of Dead, right? They would have just been, you know, well, wait a minute, why can they just print this and just hand me money now? Why couldn't they do that last month when I needed it? Right. And I think slowly over time, uh, more people will be woken up uh, to Bitcoin um, to use kind of like a, I guess a um, topical uh, term. Uh, so like coronavirus. The, the R0 or the R0 of a virus is kind of how how vir viral it is, right? How much it spreads, how much the average, how many people the average person infects. And I think the R0 of Bitcoin is going up, right? So mm -hmm. the virality of Bitcoin is going up. Like it used to be, you know, some, some nerds kind of doing some things, trying to get people to come to a conference. Now, I mean, look at it, right? I mean, if you kind of really take a step back, I mean, there's CEOs spending half a billion dollars out on this thing, right? right. There are major head, major players out there making real major moves. Um, you know, people like Fidelity, you know, I mean, these are things that are not new to anybody uh, that, that listens. But I mean, if you actually take a step back, I mean, these, these are the, that's the, the A tier, right? I mean, you're, you're here. Right. And, um, you know, I think it's happening. Um, I don't know how it actually plays out with the government wanting to fight it or whatever. Um, but again, I don't, I don't see how any centrally planned anything ever works. I mean, you know, the, the free market's never been given a chance to be a true free market. And, you know, we've never had true capitalism, right? It's always been capitalism, Tony, except Tony. They, they they get a subsidy and yeah. they get a little kickback, right? And they get tax breaks. Um, you know, 
people having to truly add value to earn money um, has never just been fair across the board. And um, I'd be speculating if I said, I know how that plays out, but I feel like it, you know, it, it, it bends towards justice, right? The, the long arc yeah. of uh, whatever the, the quote, right? And it's probably not because uh, that arc is being pushed by those at the top, but it being pulled by everybody down bottom that just, you know, hears the truth, wants, sees the light, right? And, yeah. and wants it. And um, you get enough Bitcoin or, you know, people that are true Bitcoiners, um, you get that kind of intransigent minority um, to whatever that threshold is. And I mean, we already won't shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, wait till we double or 10 X in size of, of number of people. I mean, it's, you know, good luck stopping I, that train. I keep going back to thinking about how, you know, you're a poker player and sitting at the table and, and it's win, lose or draw and it's on you. And I think that's what, you know, life is about. And what, what, what Bitcoin provides for people is, you know, an opportunity for it to, to be a win on you um, and to see the game clearly make an asymmetric bet. Uh, do you and to th- play a fair game that, that works, right. that's not rigged. Right. You know? Right. Uh, do you think after all time high, relevant Peter Schiff is going to disappear? I, well, so uh, I told everybody um, not long after I started this thing, which has now been, I think, over a year. God. Um, but I said, hey, I'm, I'm here till the next all time high. So, um, you know, people are probably tired of hearing me talking shit, probably tired of seeing Peter's face pop up on their timeline and whatnot. But, um, I guess some people still like interacting with me and, and, and messing around, but um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'll still be on Twitter either way, um, whether I just kind of fade out or, 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 or not, maybe I'll leave it up to the people, give them a poll and tell me to vote me the hell out or, or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't have any use for actually dealing with Peter anymore. Like I said, I wear him like a, like an avatar at this point. I don't, I don't, I could really, uh, couldn't care less um, right. about what he does with his thing. So um, yeah, no plans, but yeah, that was my, that was what I put in print that I'm, I'm done after the all time high. So we'll see maybe, maybe it's next week. You never know. Well, I'm so glad you hard forked the irrelevant Peter Schiff classic. <laughs> um, I really appreciate it. You know, I, I, he's just salty at this point and, and just the old man on the lawn telling us to get away. Um, so I'm just, I think it's awesome to, to kind of get, get your vibe on Twitter uh, and I love one of the things you say is, you know, it's like, it's my money. It's just not accepted everywhere yet. Um, hey, yeah, just, that's right. It's just so, you know, uh, first principle, self-sovereign. It's just like, th- this is my money. So, you know, if yeah. you, you want to take it or not. Uh, so I'm really happy. Uh, you know, I think it's awesome. I, normally I ask people where they can find you. Obviously it's at relevantpetershift.com, uh, rele- at petershift uh, on Twitter. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with everybody before we head out? Um, I don't know that I have anything, uh, specific, um, that I want to say. Um, I would just say that there's a, there's a Thomas Sowell quote. Um, if you're familiar with him, a famous economist, um, that that's stuck with me recently. And I just kind of keep hearing it in my head, but there's never been a shortage of people eager to draw up blueprints for running other people's lives. Mm. And, um, just remember that there's, there's, there's always going to be somebody that tells you how to do it, but they've never done it or they're telling you to do it because they're benefiting off the sweat of your back. Um, and I would just say, fuck all those people and you right. do whatever you feel is right. Do your, literally do your own research and, and be who you are. Because uh, if we have enough people that, that honestly take, uh, take ownership of their life, man, um, whatever that leads, whether it's Bitcoin or not, I don't, you know, I don't care where that leads you, but just that change in my mentality. And, and, you know, we, we've got way too many soft, so soft people out, out there now that just, you know, wouldn't cut it um, in, in in a real world where they weren't weren't babysit babysat. So, right. um, hmm. you know, by all means, um, do what you got to do to be uh, better, stronger, faster, harder to kill, whatever that is. Um, protect your money and don't let anybody fuck with you. So that, that's about all you can all you can really do. Yeah, I I hope you stay with us as long as we need you. Uh, I don't know how long Bitcoin Twitter will be here for. You know, I think uh, eventually it might disappear because, you know, Bitcoin would just be money and everyone will accept it. But until then, I think your shit's evergreen. Uh, I love, uh, you know, coming across your thoughts on Twitter. And I think that, you know, you are more relevant than Peter Schiff. And I'm glad we we moved on. So I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate this it. If you awesome. can tell me, you can tell him to send me his fiat. I'll send him my Bitcoin, and then I'll I'll do some conversion. And that's what's up. And we can really get relevant. Yeah, I'd get on that deal too. That's right. Yeah, this was awesome. Hey, well, I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, same here.
Peace All right, out. take it easy. That was Relevant Peter Schiff from Corporate America to Irrelevant Peter Schiff's Worst Nightmare right here on the Bitcoin Matrix podcast. And thank you for listening. If you dug the show, please vote with the thumbs and press those five stars. That's the best way to spread the word. This is said. Peace out. <laughs>